In this video, we're going to discuss unimolecular interactions and how first order interactions occur through bimolecular collisions. So as I said earlier, most reactions occur through bimolecular collisions. So how is it that something that is a first order elementary step it, that it occurs? So we have the example here of the isomerization of 2-butene. We have the Z or cis configuration reacting with some observed rate constant to form the E or trans configuration. And at high concentrations of our reactant Z here, at high concentration, high pressure of gas, uh, the rate of reaction, the reaction velocity is equal to a rate constant times the first power of the concentration. So it's first order at high concentration of Z. And at low concentration of Z, it's second order. The rate is equal to the rate constant times the square of the concentration of Z. And similarly, um, the activation barriers for this reaction is in the hundreds of kilojoules per mole. It's much, much greater than thermal energy, much, much greater than KBT, which is on the order of how much thermal energy a molecule will have. So it's a question of where does this energy come from and how does this um, how does this react in here get the energy to isomerize itself to the lower energy configuration? So the answer to this question comes from something which is called the Lindemann mechanism. And that is essentially the type of uh, mechanism that I'm going to draw down here, which is that you have the Z molecule reacting with some collision partner, which we're going to call M. And then that is in equilibrium with a forward and a reverse rate constant, K1 and K-1, with what is called the activated uh, Z molecule, noted by this asterisk, the star here on the top right, plus M, the collision partner again. So our collision partner is kind of acting catalytically in this sense. And then there is another elementary step where we have our activated Z molecule going forward with some rate constant of K2, and that is forming E. And again, all of these are gas phase. So every single species that you see here is a single gas molecule. Okay, so there's this Lindemann mechanism, as I said here. So M is the collision partner. So it's just any gas molecule which collides with our Z molecule, and it collides with enough energy to get it to a high energy state where if it is left alone long enough for a long enough period of time in that high energy state, then it can react to form its product, which is the much lower energy or slightly lower energy uh, E isomer, the trans isomer. And this Z star, as I said here, that would be called the activated Z molecule. Activated in the sense that it has a large quantity of energy and is capable of going over whatever activation barriers it needs to get to to get to E. Okay, so under these types of conditions, if we wrote a rate law, if we wrote a rate law for E, what that would look like is that DE DT is equal to it would be K2 times the concentration of Z star. So in order to get what the rate of formation for E is, we need to know what this Z star concentration is, what the concentration of our activated Z molecule is. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is invoke the steady state approximation. We're going to assume that it takes a very long period of time uh, for this activated molecule to be formed. But once the activated molecule is formed, it can pretty quickly go from its activated Z into our product E. Okay, so if we invoke steady state approximation, that says that DZ star, our intermediate, DT, is equal to zero. So there are <clears throat> intermediate is at a constant concentration, constant low concentration throughout the reaction. And that it's that will be equal to so that's all the ways we can that we can uh, form and consume it. 
So it can get formed from K1 from the forward reaction. And that rate law would be K1 times Z times M. Again, <clears throat> getting the rate law just from the reaction stoichiometry of the elementary steps. It can be consumed by the backward reaction. That law, rate law would be K1 Z star times M. And it can also be consumed by K2, by the forward second reaction, which would be K2 times Z star for its rate. <clears throat> okay, so we have zero equals, and there's two terms with Z star in there, so you need to algebraically solve for Z star. And if you solve that little kind of three steps of algebra there, that will come out to be K1 times Z times M divided by K2 plus K1 times concentration of M. Let me also note here that by the steady state approximation that the concentration change of E over time is equal to the minus concentration change of Z over time. So this is true via steady state approximation as is this as well, true via steady state approximation. So this gives us, if we substitute in our concentration of Z star here <clears throat> into DE dt, um, plug that in, we'll get the term that I write down here. So that is that our DE dt, which is equal to minus DZ dt. So DE dt is equal to K1, times K2, which comes from down here, times Z times M over K2 plus K1 times M, which is equal to, and then our minus DZ DT, which is equal to this, which is DE DT. So let me just say that that is equal to DE DT which is equal to minus DA DT, which is equal to, and, or sorry, DZ DT. Getting all confused with letters here, DZ DT. This is equal to DZ DT, which is equal to, and that is also equal to um, its change in concentration of time, its minus change of its concentration over time is equal to K observed times its concentration times Z. So what we can do here is divide both of these sides by the concentration of Z and get what K observed is in terms of these other three rate constants, K1, K minus one, and K2. So we have K observed is going to equal K1, K2 times concentration of M divided by K2 plus K minus one times M. Okay, so this is our observed rate constant in terms of these three quantities from the Lindemann mechanism, the initial collision to generate the activated Z, and then the final reaction of activated Z to E. So there are some simplifications we can make here in terms of high and low concentration to see if this Lindemann mechanism uh, uh, explains this behavior of it being a first order reaction at high uh, concentration and a second order con reaction at low concentration. So let's look here. So for example, we have at high concentration of M. So if the concentration of M is large, that means K minus one times M is much, much greater than K2, and that means that K observed is going to be equal to. So K, K minus one M being much greater than K2, the denominator becomes K minus one times M, and then M cancels out on the top and the bottom. And what you're left with is you have K1, K2, over K minus one. So your K observed is a constant at high concentration 
at low concentration of your collision partner M, what you have is K2 is much, much greater than K minus 1 times M. And in that circumstance, K observed is going to be equal to, well, what do we have? We have K2 is much, much greater than K1 minus 1 M. So this denominator becomes just K2. Then you have K1, K2, M over K2. The K2s will cancel, and you're left with K1 times M. So this gives you your final result then, <clears throat> uh, your reaction rate for each of these types of concentrations. So your reaction rate at high concentration, which is equal to K observed times Z, is equal to K1, K2 over K minus 1 times Z, which is first order in Z at high concentration. And at low concentration, your reaction rate is equal to K1 times M. And in this case, if the g entire gas pressure is very low, M, the, the collision partner, is just another Z molecule. So M is actually Z, so you have K1Z, which is K observed, times the, other, times the additional Z. So you get K1 times Z squared, which is second order. So indeed what we see is the Linden mechanism, this reaction, this collision with a, with a partner to produce an activated complex, which then reacts to form the, the product. We see that this predicts a rate constant, which shows us that at high concentration, we would predict a first order mechanism as is experimentally observed. And at low concentration, we would predict a second order mechanism, which is cons both of those are consistent with experiment. And in the middle, there will be some region where it's, neither of these assumptions is true, and you're kind of interpolating between the two values there, and you're neither first nor second order. But in both these limiting cases, high concentration and low concentration, the Lindemann mechanism produces results which are consistent with the, uh, with the experimental results.